السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا بما ينفعنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today insha'Allah we will talk about one of the unique pearls in Islam one of the mothers of the believers she is the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Juwayriya bint al-Harith radiyallahu anha So Juwayriya radiyallahu anha was of the noble women of the noble leaders and uh, she was very wise she had a good opinion she was very pious she was always remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking him for all the blessings that she was uh, having and she had a sound heart Juwayriya was highly educated and she narrated the uh, so many hadiths for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So who is this pearl? Who is this mother of the believers? Her name is Jubayriya bint al-Harith and she was a leader in Bani al-Mustaliq. She was pious and she was very beautiful. She was the daughter of Al Harith ibn Abi Dirar, and Al Harith was the leader of Bani Al Mustaliq. And Bani Al Mustaliq is a group of Khuza'a, the clan of Khuza'a. Um, her name before getting married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Barra. And uh, when uh, she got married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave her the name of Juwayriya. And that was one of the uh, norms of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to change the bad name to a good name. And he hated that people would say he went out of Barra's, Barra's house, so he, which means he left the blessings. And that was not appropriate to say about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he changed her name from Barra to Juwayriya. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got married to uh, Juwayriya Radiallahu Anha in the fifth year of Hijra. And this year was remarkable that uh, the uh, Medina, the blessed Medina, uh, witnessed so many dangerous events. And in this year, Quraysh uh, got all the armies together and they wanted uh, to fight Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they got people from Quraysh, they got people from Tihama, people from Ahbash, they got the people of Najd, everyone were under their banner and they wanted to fight Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So to avoid this army, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered his companions to dig a trench, a deep trench uh, around, all around uh, al Medina. And it was the first time for the Arabs to do such a thing 
uh, and they took it from the Romans. And it was the idea of Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu an, who was originally from the Romans. So the uh, enemy, of course, all Quraysh uh, uh, army, they were so bewildered to the to the event and to the scene they have they, they that was in front of them a big trench they it was not uh, uh, possible to pass this trench it was not possible to get uh, uh, over it it was so difficult to 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 try even to do anything to avoid this trench they, they it was impossible so this army, the non-believers army, did not know what to do. So what they did, they uh, they uh, circled the 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 people in Medina. They circled the Medina, and this uh, <clears throat> their uh, uh, boycott, and they made boycott, nothing to get out or into the to Medina. So that lasted uh, 27 days. And, you know, it was, it was not easy for the Muslims, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made something uh, that he uh, put the fear in the hearts of the non-believers. So that was uh, the end and they flee and they run away and the Muslims uh, got victor victorious. So the battle ended, the battle of the trench ended. And after that, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam headed towards the uh, uh, Jewish of Bani Qurayza, the hypocrites who broke the promises to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they will be good, uh, uh, they will be good uh, believers, they will be uh, uh, their, their relationship will be uh, safe, they will not fight them, so they broke their promises. So what happened? Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, headed to them and he wanted to just uh, get rid of them. Again, the Muslims were so victoria, victorious and they had, uh, and they punished him, they punished them severely. So it was uh, 25 days of uh, uh, surrounding their castles and the surrounding their places that they cannot get out of it, of them. So again, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was victorious uh, fighting the Jewish of Bani Qurayza. It was just a little bit after that that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard the news that Al-Harith ibn Abi Dirar, the leader of, Say of Bani al-Mustaliq, uh, was, was uh, gathering all the army and preparing the... Uh, uh, horses preparing the artilleries. They wanted to attack the Medina of Rasulullah sallallahu So, what would normally say the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would do? He would send someone to get the news, just to hide among the people and to get the news of what's going on. So he sent, uh, um, mashallah, a, a, a very good companion whose name was Buraydatu ibn al-Harith. 
radiyallahu an so he sent them to bani al he sent him to bani al mustalaq al mustalaq so he would get the news and give it back to sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so buraida radiyallahu an went out of medina secretly until he reached the uh, uh, tribe uh, the the place of bani al mustalaq and he wandered between them very carefully and he got uh, uh, so um, he he got so uh, worried uh, he got uh, that he didn't want anyone to see him so he was uh, just doing his job as soon as possible as quickly as possible and he went back to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell him what he saw. So he told Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that uh, they are gathering their men, they're preparing their armies, their uh, horses, and uh, they're getting ready to come to fight Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Al-Madina. And of course, their name, uh, their main purpose was to get rid of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and with that, Islam would be uh, would vanish from, uh, and then no, no one will be a Muslim anymore. So that was their aim. But when Burayda came back to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very quickly, uh, he told Sayyidina Muhammad of what he has seen and what he has heard in the, amongst the people of Bani Mustariq. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the orders, the immediate orders, just to prepare themselves to fight. So, this was what happened. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam surprised Bani al-Mustalaq. They were not prepared to fight them in their, in their houses or in their area. And especially when they were gathering around uh, uh, some water, uh, some wells at uh, close to them. And it was called, the place called al muraysiya so, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam surprised uh, the, the leader of Bani Mustanaq and the Muslims fought at that time like so, so bravely. So, the Bani Mustanaq fought and it was from the very beginning, from the very first minutes that the the result of the battle uh, was clear. It was only an hour or or less uh, that the battle was uh, ended. That the battle ended, and it was a very big victory to the Muslims. And uh, the Bani al Mustalaq were severely defeated. So. The Muslims got so much, uh, so many booties at that uh, battle, and they got so many captives. And it was said that it was hundreds of captives. And amongst them, there were also uh, women. And uh, in Medina, of course, they learned about the good news of the victory. They learned about that before the Muslims came back. And of course, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam distributed the booties amongst the fighters, among the, the soldiers, and amongst the other Muslims in Al Medina. So Barra bintul Harith ibn Abi Dhirar 
the daughter of Bani al-Mustaliq uh, and, and their leader uh, was amongst those who were taken as captives of war. So while the distributing the uh, booties, Barra was given to uh, Thabit ibn Qais. So Thabit, uh, uh, Thabit kept her uh, for himself after after paying. So so she was given as uh, uh, she was uh, she was given to Thabit and to his cousin, but Thabit paid some uh, uh, some some. Uh, uh, palm trees gave he gave uh, his cousin palm trees so he got barra all to himself and barra was a leader in her in her tribe in her in Badi al she was the daughter of the leader of the of uh, of the of the of Badi al so all, all her time, all her life, she would give orders and she would be obeyed. She was very beautiful and she was very clever. So she thought of what has happened to her. And of course, she refused to be uh, a slave to anyone. So she uh, proposed to Thabit that tell me whatever amount of money you want so I would give it to you and you would free me. So Thabit said to her, I will ask, I'm asking for you to give me nine, uh, nine piece, pieces of gold. So if you do that, then I will free you and I will marry you. At that time, this amount of money, this amount of gold was unbelievable big amount. So Barra radiallahu anha knew that even if she was free, she would not be able to pay such a big amount. So how can she pay it now while she is captive. So, as we mentioned, she was a very wise woman. She was a very clever woman. So she asked to meet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She heard that, she knows that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is so merciful. So she went to him. And she told him her story. She hoped that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, would give her a solution that would free her of, of slavery. So this beautiful woman uh, who is not yet 20 years old was talking to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and from the way she was talking you feel you feel how uh, broken she was and how hopeful she was when she was talking to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so she said to him يا رسول الله إني امرأة مسلمة أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأنك رسول الله O oh, Messenger of Allah I am a Muslim woman who believe in that there is no God but Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that you are the Messenger of Allah and I am the daughter of Barra. Uh, I am the daughter of 
the leader of the of of Bani al Mustalik. And you know, وَقَدْ أَصَابَنَا مِنَ الْأَمْرِ مَا عَلِمْتَ You know what happened to us during the battle. وَوَقَعْتُ فِي سَهْمِ ثَابِتِ بْنِ قَيْسٍ وَبْنِ عَمٍ لَهِ And I was given to Thabit bin Qais and to his cousin. وَخَلَّصَنِي ثَابِتُ مِنْ بْنِ عَمِّهِ بِنَ خَلَاتٍ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ And Thabit paid some money, some uh, money equal to, some, to, to, to the price of a few uh, palm trees, and he kept me for himself. وَكَاتَبَنِي عَلَى مَا لَا طَاقَةَ لِي بِهِ And he wanted me, uh, the mukataba that at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi was that the master of the slave would tell him, if you give me this much amount of money, then you will be free. So she, she was telling Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that the amount he asked for was unbelievable. I cannot pay it. وَإِنِّي اسْتَعَنْتُكَ فَأَعِنِّي فِي مُكَاتَبَتِي And here I am. I came to you so that you would help me to pay this amount of money. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he was so merciful. He was uh, so careful about women. He, he saw how uh, this... Uh, leader of her, of her, uh, uh, of Bani Mustalik, he saw how she was, يعني, she was suffering in humility. She saw how she came to him asking for his, for his help. So he said, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was thinking what to do. And she was waiting for a word to be said by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it was a few minutes that passed and Barra felt that these few minutes were like ages. Until Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lifted up his head, he looked at her with the eye of mercy, and he said to her, How about if there is something more khair for you than what you are asking for? And she looked at Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and she asked him, what, what is it that's better than this, Ya Rasulullah? So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, أقضي عنك كتابك وأتزوج Pay your, you, you, this money that he is asking for and I will get married, I will marry you. Unbelievably. She could not believe what she heard. She remembered a dream that she saw earlier. And she said, رأيت قبل قدوم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بثلاث ليال كأن القمر يسير من يثرب حتى وقع في حجري. I saw in a dream three days uh, three nights before the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Medina, that the moon is in my lap. فَكَرِهْتُ أَنْ أُخْبِرَ أَحَدًا مِنَ النَّاسِ I hated to tell anyone of people. I, I didn't tell anyone. حَتَّى قَدِبَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Until Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came. فَلَمَّا سُبِينَا and when we were taken as captives, Rajautu Ruya. I was thinking of that dream and I was hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would do something, would fulfill my dream. So the result was Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam freed me and he married me. And that was 
the meaning or that was the interpretation of that dream. So now she is the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what was the reason that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to get married to, to Barra? And of course, immediately, as I mentioned, immediately after he got married to her, he changed his name to Juwayriya. So what was the reason why would Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam marry Juwayriya? So, so the reason for that, that he, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wanted to, to have in-laws relationship with, with her tribe, with her big tribe. Hoping that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would guide their hearts to this new religion. So the Muslims around Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam learned and uh, heard that he has freed Jubayriya radiallahu anha and he married her. So they said, now the, her people who are captives are the in-laws of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we cannot have them as slaves. So they released them all. And this is why it is said that Juwayriya radiallahu anha was a big blessing to her tribe. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the Muslims actually, they freed about a hundred of the captives who are all the captives of Bani al-Mustaliq. And this was an amazing thing that happened to the her tribe because of the marriage of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to her. So now the the, uh, the daughter of the leader of Bani al-Mustaliq, Juwayriya radiallahu anha, was of the mothers of believers. She was the wife of the best of the creation, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha uh, describes uh, uh, and she says she was a very very beautiful and attractive woman no one would look at her but she will she will capture his heart she, she would she would be uh, uh, and he, it, it would be obvious how beautiful that that woman was. So Juwayriya she was a very good Muslim and she has strong faith. She was a lover to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And all that uh, all, all of that was uh, Manifested when her father, Al Harith, came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam after a while, because he wanted to get his daughter back. So he came and asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to release his daughter because it was so shameful for him that his daughter would be a captive and a slave to anybody. So he said to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna abnati la yusba mithluha, fa'ana akramu min thalik. The like of my daughter, those, those girls who are the daughters of the leaders of their tribes, they would never get... Uh, 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 captive, captivated. They would never, never be of the captives, and I want her to to be free. 
So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how about if we ask her, if she wants to go with you, she's, she's free to do that. But if she wants to be with me, then I will not ask her to leave. So her father accepted. And he was so happy to hear that uh, proposal from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's stop for a second and remember, there was a similar story that happened earlier and that we mentioned in previous classes. It was the story of Zayd ibn Haritha, radiallahu anhu, when he was uh, uh, kidnapped by the people and he was sold as a slave. And Hakim ibn Hizam bought him and he gave him as a gift to Khadija radiallahu anha. And in turn, Khadija radiallahu anha gave him as a gift to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was very young when that happened. So when his father heard where after uh, looking for him and searching for him, he heard that he was with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he came to him and he praised Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He praised his fathers, he praised his family. And he said, I want my son back. And the same thing Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. He said, we will bring, we will bring Zaid and we will ask him. If he chooses to go with you, I don't want any money. I will not take any money for you. You, you can take him and go. But if he decided, if he said, no, I want to be with, with Muhammad, then I will not give him to you. And he was very happy to hear that. And the same response was from Juwayriya radiallahu anha and from Zaid radiallahu anha. So both of them, them when they were given the choice to go back with their families, with their fathers, they both said the same thing. No. They said, we want to stay with the best of the creation. So now her father, her father was very, very uh, surprised. Why would his daughter accept to be with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is it, is it really that he is hearing correctly that his free, noble leader uh, daughter is staying? What's going on? There must be a reason. There must be a secret. So Al Harith thought and he thought and thought again. He thought about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the, the mission that he is calling for. And he was thinking with his heart. And he soon accepted Islam. He soon realized that the the idols he is worshipping, the stones he is worshipping, they cannot benefit him. There is nothing that is beneficial of these, of these stones. These are just some stones that do not harm, they do not uh, uh, give victory, they do not help, they do not speak, they do not have feelings. There's nothing with these, with these stones that he is worshipping. So he took, he took the decision and he realized that Islam is the best religion. So he came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he uh, acknowledged Islam and he said the words of Islam uh, she, uh, she said the uh, so so, so Al Haris said the words of uh, of Islam. He said, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah." Again, 
the marriage of Juwayriya radiyallahu anha did something good to all her tribe. After the, uh, the convert of uh, her father to, to be a Muslim, so many people of her tribe became Muslims. And later on, everyone became a Muslim. So how, how much is the khair of Sayyida Juwayriya radiyallahu anha to, the, to her tribe, to the Muslims? So Sayyida Juwayriya radiyallahu anha, the mother of the believers, was living in the house of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was watching Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with every single movement, with every single action, every single word that he was saying. And she was learning from him. And her, her faith was getting stronger day after day. She would listen to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he would be reading the Quran and he would be interpreting it. And she would, she would love to hear that. She was also listening to his words and she, she memorized his, his words and she made everything that he said as a program for her in her life. So after, after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Juwayriya radiyallahu anha was narrating hadith after hadith after hadith. And she was conveying to the generations what she heard from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Juwayriya radiyallahu anha lived a long life after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she saw all the victory at the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, at the time of Sayyidina Umar, and she, 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 was, uh, she had a long life to live until the time of Uthman radiyallahu an and Ali radiyallahu an. And then she saw how Muawiyah radiallahu an got the uh, 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 got the khilafa, and the caliphate uh, uh, center was moved to Damascus. So this was a little bit about. أم المؤمنين جويرية بنت الحارث رضي الله عنها. Because of her tribe, because of her, her tribe became Muslims. Because of her, the, everyone was was getting uh, blessings and uh, baraka. So one of the let's mention uh, one of the hadith that she narrated to Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was that. That Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by her at the very beginning of the day when he went out to Fajr prayer. And he came back uh, uh, more than an hour after that. And he saw Juwayriya radiallahu anha was still in her prayer uh, place, just making zikr and dua and, and uh, 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 worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when, he, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw her, he said, are you like this since the minute I left you? You did not uh, leave your place? You did not stop worshipping? She said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. And she said, so she said, yes. So he, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said to her, Ala u'allimuki kalimatin taqulihin. So should I 
teach you a few words that you would say, and they will have equal amount of blessings, khair and barakah. So you don't need to sit all that long hours just worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering him. You, say, you can say, subhanallah adad khalqih. Subhanallah adad khalqih. Glory is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same number that he has created his creation. Glory is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would be satisfied. Subhanallah ridha nafsih. Then he said, Subhanallah zina ta'arshi. So glory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zina ta'arshi. The way he, his throne, you see, the way his throne, the weight of his throne. And then he said the last one, Subhanallah, kalimati. Subhanallah, glory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, as much as the ink of the, uh, uh, that, that would be for all the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was one of the narrations that he says, if you, if you say these, then you will be having the same results uh, uh, as worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for over an hour after Fajr prayer. So she says in another narration, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَقَدْ قُلْتُ بَعْدَكِ أَرْبَعَ كَلِمَاتِ so I said a few, four words or four phrases three times. So if, if that, the, the reward of these words is um, uh, compared to the reward of your worship of over an hour, then it will be the same reward. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adad khalqih, wa ridha nafsih, wa zina ta'arshih, wa midada kalimatih. So the, this is the, uh, the, the, it, it, uh, the phrase that we would say the dhikr that we would say after Fajr prayer, that would be so highly rewardable. So this was a Sayyida Barra radiallahu anha. This was the mother of the believers, Juwayriya radiallahu anha. And she was the one who would Look at Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, watch him, learn from him, and uh, apply it in her life. She was pious. She had a sound heart. She, she had uh, so much knowledge. She was uh, knowledgeable in fiqh. She had a sound heart and she loved Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and she loved Sayyidina Muhammad so this was just a little bit about the life of a Sayyida Juwayriya bint al-Harith radiyallahu anha wa ardaha, the mother of the believers, the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the pearls of Islam. Until next week. I leave you by sending a special greeting and the best salams to our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.